When I first started talking about this, it was something that I just talked about for five or 10 minutes at the end of, of my shooting lecture that I gave. And I came to find out that this was actually one of the topics that athletes found the most valuable out of the whole week. So I've sort of expanded on it. And it's one of those topics that I could literally talk about for hours. So what I want to say about confidence, and again, I'll preface all this by saying I'm not, I don't have a degree in psychology. I don't have any formal training in psychology. But this is what I know about confidence. This is what I learned about confidence. And I think that confidence comes from two things, and two things only. I think that the first place that confidence comes from is your preparation. Your preparation. You know, there's, there's no, no substitute for the feeling of confidence that you get from knowing that you've done the work, from knowing that you've put in the time. And a big part of confidence just comes from good old fashioned skill. I mean, the better, the more proficient you are at something, the more competent you are at something, the more, or the, the more competent you are at something, the more confidence you will have in it. And you don't get those kinds of skills without putting in the work, without getting in the gym and doing the time. And a lot of times, younger players especially will come up to me and say things like, you know, Coach D, I, I don't know what's wrong, but I just don't have any confidence in my shot. If I just had more confidence in my shot, I know I could hit more of them. And I ask a few more questions of them, and I ask them, you know, how much are you shooting? Are you counting your shots? Are you recording your improvement? Do you have a regular shooting routine that you do every day? And come to find out, well, no, not really. I kind of just shoot around. Well, that's not a lack of confidence issue. That's a lack of preparation issue. So the first thing that I think you should kind of do a self-check on with yourself is if you're someone who struggles with confidence, ask yourself, is this really a lack of confidence issue or is this a lack of preparation issue? I mean, it would almost be as if I said something ridiculous like, I just don't know what's wrong with me these days, but I just have no confidence performing brain surgery on someone. Well, I shouldn't be confident performing brain surgery. You should hope that I'm not very confident performing brain surgery because I've never been to medical school. I don't even like to see blood. It makes me faint. So I shouldn't have any confidence performing brain surgery. Well, the same thing is true with shooting, for example. If you don't practice your shooting regularly and consistently, then you shouldn't feel confident in your shot. And your coach probably doesn't want you to feel confident in your shot because you probably don't have a high level of skill with your shooting. So the first place that confidence comes from is your preparation. And you know, people ask me all the time, how do I get more confident in my shot? Well, if every day between now and let's say, let's say for, for six months to a year, if say six days a week, every single day you get in the gym and you do a 400 to 500 shot shooting workout where you shoot high quality shots, game shots from, from game spots at game speed and you record your results, I can pretty much promise you that six months from now or a year from now, you'll be a lot more confident in your shot. But nobody wants that answer because that takes work and that takes time. And so the first place that confidence comes from is your preparation. But some of you do do the work, you do put in the time, and confidence is still an issue. And so that brings me to the second place that confidence comes from, and this is really what I want to talk about for the rest of the time. The second place that confidence comes from is what you think about all day. What you think about all day, and that sounds kind of simplistic, but let's look at that a little more closely. In the 1800s, there was a psychologist named William James, and William James said, people tend to become what they think about themselves. People tend to become what they think about themselves. And I think you could substitute a few words in there and say something like, athletes tend to become what they think about themselves, 